When I come out of the house of an evening to go down to their kennel, I do that just so they know it's me. And I'll start doing that with gunfire as well. I'll come out of the house, my dog kennel's about 100 yards from the house, and I'll shoot a blank pistol. And then when I show up, they're excited to see me. So they learn over time that that gunfire is something that's gonna be positive. Well, everybody likes to get a wing out, and that tells you a little bit about your dog's conformation, their intensity, their drive. Do they have that chase? You know, ultimately you're gonna train the dog to not chase. He's gonna be trained to hold the point and wait for you to get there, but you gotta have a puppy that wants to chase something, birds. A wing substitutes for that early on. So a dog that wouldn't be showing any interest here would be one you might wanna back off of, but all these guys are basically chasing the wing, and every now and then, you can get them to stop and point. And then that gives you right there a little bit of a sense of their conformation, their tail set, how high they hold their head. A dog really doesn't come into their nose till they're five to seven months old. So they'll visually point like this here early on, sometimes six weeks old, five weeks old. But that scent, uh, their olfactory doesn't really kick in till they're six, seven months old. I've had dogs that wouldn't point scent for eight months, almost to the point you want to give up on them, and they turn out to be some of the best, best uh, pointing dogs ever. Everybody talks about pedigree. Are they papered? Are they pedigreed? And that's all important, keeping good bloodlines of dogs, but when I'm picking a pup, I don't go to the pedigree first. I want to see the parents. I wouldn't mind hunting with the guy that owns the parents, and I want a puppy out of two dogs, male and female, that are just barn-burning, quail-finding machines. But I like to run these puppies with my big dogs, and they automatically learn the name of the game is to run. The big dogs are gonna run, and these puppies will run with them. So it's important to get them out early, go to the park, walk with them. Another thing is they naturally like to retrieve at this age. Well, a dog, if you don't mess with them from this age on, they will give up that retrieving instinct. A puppy loves retrieving. The best thing you can do is get a sock and put a knot in it and you want to retrieve, play fetch in a hallway or somewhere where they can't get away, I'm going to throw this, but she's probably going to just run around with it, and that's okay too. What I'm doing here is every day I'm throwing them something to pick up, and they can run around with it all they want, and they're learning the game is to, to retrieve. Here you go. Now you got to make sure they see it first, and she's already distracted by the wing. A lot of distractions. Let's see if I can get her to fetch it. Just pick it up, and all you want is to grab it and run around with it. Puppy. Puppy, 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 puppy. Puppy, puppy. I, you notice I'm whistling. I like to whistle because that's going to carry throughout their life. They're going to get used to my tone. And right there, he's running around with it. All I'm wanting there is to see that he's got an instinct to put something in his mouth and keep it in there and run around. Now, if you'll keep that up from when they're like eight weeks old on, the retrieving ability of that dog has improved remarkably versus you start your dog at six months. Another thing you want to do early is uh, collar break them. What I actually do is I've got a little stake out and I'll put a collar on the dog and you stay with them. Collar your dog up and you stake them out and it, they'll fight it and it just, it teaches them to give in to the collar. The collar and their neck is gonna be your steering wheel. That's gonna be how you guide, direct, and train a, a dog really throughout its life. But you gotta get them broke. It's kind of like breaking in a pair of boots. It doesn't feel good at first, but they'll get broke. These guys have not had a collar on, but if you'll stake them out with a collar, you know, stay put and watch them because you don't want to get them tangled up or get them hurt. But once they finally give in to that stake out on the collar, you're making progress. But you can use a, we're just going to modify this thing. It's just show you how they'll probably, she'll probably fight it. But basically you just put the collar so you put it on her. She's never had anything on her, so we just got something around her neck. So we're just piddling with her. She's she's doing pretty good right there. So there we go. And you're just getting them used to having something on their neck, and they'll fight it a little bit. And then you just keep keep your hands on them. See, you're just touching them all the time. So I'm gonna try to stand her up, and hold her head up. There we go. Good girl. Good girl, so she's doing really good. Got that tail up. I like to touch my dogs all the time, even my older dogs. I'll touch them when I'm in the field. I'll go up and style up their tails, pet them, tell them good. 
and it just gets your dog comfortable with people. The best dog is a dog that loves you. You gotta love your dog and the dog's gotta love you. You see this guy, he stuck his nose in a kennel and the big dog took advantage of him. Yeah, he got a big old hump on his nose, yeah. A dog that's got a real high tail that's going back and forth is gonna be one that's got a really nice tail set when he points. If they don't have a real high noon tail set, that tail will be down a lot lower when they're running. But if their tail's going back and forth all the time, you know they're having a good time. The other thing really is uh, probably where you see the biggest problems in dogs is people in uh, just not introducing a dog to gunfire at the right time or in the wrong way. So I would say one of the main problems in taking on somebody's dog to mess with or train is they've introduced gunfire in a way that makes that dog gun shy. I hear guys saying, fetch it, get it, bring it, drop it, give it, fetch it. Fetch means go get it and bring it back. If it's load up, it's load up, not get in here, get over here, kennel. If it's load up, keep it load up. If it's kennel, that's the dog box, that's the crate, that's the kennel, whatever it is. And whoa, you gotta teach them whoa and their name, which is basically come. If you can get them to come to you and you can get them to stop, you can hunt quail with anybody. The other one's already off in the brush, but so I just like to see if I can get them to my command to follow me. Puppies, puppy, let's go. Let's hunt. Come on. Yo, let's go, pup. Yep. Find a bird. Find a bird. Find a bird. 